lecture for today is titled, Does My Rabbit Need Braces? Which, there was a lot of questions on that, as whether or not rabbits did actually need braces. And I will let you know from the beginning that, as of right now, we do not have braces available for rabbits, but maybe one day. Um, it was just kind of a cute play on words, because today what we're going to be talking about is dental issues in rabbits. So, um, welcome again to the Zoo Corner Rabbit Rescue Lecture Series that we've been putting on. This is the fourth one of the year that we have uh, been able to show to you guys. And you can see all the different ones we've already talked about. Just basic husbandry, identifying and treating rabbit illnesses, dietary issues, and now we're on to dental. Um, we still have a couple more to go later on to finish out the year. One in September and then another one in November. So. Of all those lectures, you can see that you know we have one specifically de uh, dedicated to dentals in rabbits. And why is it that we really care so much about dental issues in rabbits? And why do we have a whole lecture dedicated just to the teeth of rabbits? Well, the reason that is is because dental issues are one of the most common problems that we see in rabbits coming into the hospital. So, um, and the reason for that is because they do have a little bit different anatomy uh, than we do. So what their teeth are called is hypsodont dentition. What that means is that the roots of their teeth are open. So when you have the roots of those teeth open, there's a good blood supply to those teeth, and those teeth are actually constantly growing throughout the life of the rabbit. There are about 28 teeth. Well, there are 28 teeth in the mouth of a healthy rabbit that doesn't have any teeth missing. And what that is is we have uh, six incisors total, 10 premolars, and 12 molars. Up on the top portion of the mouth, we have uh, six incisors. A lot of times people just see the front two incisors. There's actually two teeth right behind those front incisors called the peg teeth. And so if you have a, a healthy rabbit with healthy incisors, then you're probably never really going to see those little peg teeth unless you're really looking out for them. Um, and I'll show you some pictures of what those look like. We also have about six premolars on the top, six molars on the bottom, or on the uh, six premolars on the top and then six molars. And then when we look at the bottom teeth, we do only have two lower incisors. We don't have any peg teeth back there that are hiding. And then we have four premolars and six molars. So just a nice little picture for um, what the mouth of the rabbit actually looks like. Those incisors actually have this sort of chisel shape so that it makes a really sharp edge so that when they're grasping their food, they can easily cut through vegetation and bring that into the mouth. And so when you look at the picture here, you can actually see how those incisors kind of come up together to make this nice little sharp cutting edge. And so those are your front incisors, and then right behind you have your little peg teeth. And so they come together right at this perfect little angle to cut those, the, you know, grass, hay, and everything, and bring it into the mouth. So then in the back, we have what's called the cheek teeth. So your cheek teeth are going to be your premolars and your molars. And those have a more flat surface, and those actually come together to grind one against one another to actually break that food particle down so that they swallow it into smaller little bits. So we're going to go over the different dental problems that we can see in rabbits. We're going to start off with going over incisors. And so the different kind of dental problems that we can see, malocclusions, fractures, infections, and something called ribbing. And we're going to go over each individual one. So to start off with some normal rabbit teeth. This is what the normal rabbit should look like. You have your upper incisors coming in front of your lower incisors. And when you look at them on the side, you can see how those lower incisors are nice and kind of pointed, hitting just behind the uppers, um, well, in between the front uppers and the peg teeth. So they're coming at a nice, normal angle. So an incisor malocclusion is defined as those incisors are just not lining up appropriately. This is all normal. This is where the incisors actually look like they're supposed to. So a true malocclusion is just those incisors are not coming together. And you can have a variety of manifestations 
of those incisor malocclusions. You can have it be something really serious where you have those lower incisors actually coming in front of the upper incisors, and when those lower incisors come in front of the upper incisors, they're not able to really wear down on one another as appropriately as they should. And a lot of times what will happen is those upper incisors will start to grow and actually curl kind of back. Um, you can have those upper incisors not really have too much of a problem and really have the lower incisors be more the issue where those lower incisors actually come up and can actually even, I've seen them poke the nares of the rabbit and cause little infections. You can have sort of more minor things like in that picture over there in the corner where the teeth are just ever so slightly rotated. Now that rabbit in the corner, you can see that his incisors are not really overgrown or too long. He's lucky in that he does have a malocclusion. They're not coming together normally, but he's able to still have them at an angle to where he's able to chew and um, keep them ground down to an appropriate length. You can see the guy all the way at the bottom there has a really interesting and different sort of um, occlusion to those incisors where those bottom ones are actually kind of coming up to the side and you can see that he actually is even getting it into the back of the cheek there and if you opened up that cheek you'd actually see that that incisor is hitting the, the gum um, which is probably pretty sore and not so comfortable for that rabbit. So what do we do with these cases that have these incisor malocclusions? Well, there's a few different types of treatments that we can do to resolve this issue. There's corrective trimming, there's training the incisors, and then there's also extracting the incisors. And each individual problem that we encounter will require maybe a different one of these types of um, treatment options. It all depends on the individual rabbit and what their teeth are actually doing and how they are malocluding. So we'll go over those different types of um, corrective procedures. So the first corrective procedure I wanted to go over is something called incisor training. And this is something that's very um, new and something that Dr. Canfer here at Exotic Animal Care Center has really been pioneering. She's um, the one who has really done a lot of work to bring this about and make it uh, a feasible option for a lot of rabbits. So. The incisor training is done in young rabbits only. It can't be done in adult rabbits. So it's in those young babies that when we see them for their first visits, for their little well rabbit check, that we recognize that, you know what, this little guy unfortunately doesn't have the best occlusion, his teeth are a little off. Is there something that we can actually do about this so that we can correct him from having long-term problems down the road? Um, so what we're doing with incisor training. I'm going to show you guys a series of pictures in just a moment here. But what it's doing is it's really trying to get those incisors to line up appropriately so that later on he doesn't have to have corrective trimming or incisor extraction. What we do with this actual procedure is we have to trim the molars in the back of the mouth down, which we'll go over that a little bit more later. And then there's very special and specific grinding down of the incisors to line them up appropriately. After you have this sort of one big surgical procedure to correct the shape and um, occlusion of that mouth, those rabbits then have to come in on a weekly to every other week basis to actually have those teeth trimmed over a month to a couple of months period of time to try and get them to train appropriately. So this is kind of like our version of orthodontics in rabbits. So no, we don't have those braces available yet. Um, this is what we have to do for them to try and get those things lined up nicely. So here's some pictures to start off. So this is a young rabbit that came into the hospital. And what you see here is he's actually under anesthesia. Um, he came in because he was just a, a well rabbit, but it was identified during his exam that he did have incisor malocclusion. And with him in particular, his incisor malocclusion isn't too bad. This is the early stages. This is before it's gotten really bad and those teeth have really overgrown and starting to curl and do really crazy things. His teeth are simply just kind of coming together, one right on top of the other. So here he is for his first day of the procedure. He's under anesthesia. What he has over his face here, he actually has a breathing tube down, oops, a breathing tube down his um, throat there, and he has a little bit of tape to kind of keep that in place. 
you can see from the side here that he does have um, those teeth coming together a little bit abnormally. The lowers are coming just right in front of those uppers. So it's very mild at this stage, but if it kept going, he would eventually really have some problems. So what Dr. Camphor is doing with this particular rabbit, this was her patient, um, in this picture what he's is on is called a dental rack. And so he's under anesthesia, he's you know asleep, he doesn't know anything that's going on right now, and he's attached to this dental rack so that we can actually open that mouth up really wide. Um, you know, it's funny, sometimes people come into the hospital and say, I didn't realize my rabbit had more teeth than just those incisors. And it's because you never see them, because they have these nice big cheeks that cover everything up, all those big teeth in the back. And so when we actually are trying to do stuff with the mouth, we have to put them on these racks to open that mouth up and spread those cheeks out so we can actually get to those teeth appropriately. So he's on the rack here and he first has a molar trim so the teeth in the back of the mouth are actually all shaved down to a short height. After those teeth are shaved down to a short height, those incisors are then actually trimmed down as well. In this picture, they're now actually slightly, they're not quite hitting, um, there's just a slight gap in between the two of them. And when you look from the side, now that he's had that corrective trimming, he does actually have those lower incisors coming behind the upper incisors where they should be. So this was his first procedure that was done. After this, he had to come back multiple times, again on a once week to every other week basis, to have these incisors trimmed over this particular rabbit, I think was maybe like a month or two, um, and then he eventually had his teeth better. Here are some follow-up pictures. This is, uh, I believe, about two weeks after that cor first corrective trimming. So you can see in this picture here, when we're lining up those incisors, they're actually coming together a little bit more nicely. They're not perfect. He, this is still early in his process, but they're actually coming together much nicer than that original photograph of him. And when you're looking at him on front, he has a much more normal occlusion, much more normal um, coming together of those teeth. Now, incisor training, unfortunately, isn't appropriate for all animals, and it doesn't work for all rabbits either. Again, it's only something that's able to be done in the young rabbit, because as that young rabbit is still growing, we still have room for kind of working with those teeth and hopefully getting them to a more normal appearance. If we have an older rabbit that comes in that has those incisors being really overgrown and has it maybe being a chronic problem, then we do have to do incisor extractions. The pictures are a little bloody, um, of course this one to the side, and it does look a little scary when you actually see this kind of picture close up, but what's happening is that incisor there is actually being removed. Um, and those incisors are extremely long. I'll show you some x-rays a little bit later on in the presentation here that will show you how long the roots of those teeth actually are. So this is a very delicate procedure where we actually have to go in and gently kind of work around that incisor to slowly extract it. Over in the corner here, those are all the incisors that have been extracted, extracted out. And then at the very bottom, that's a rabbit that has had it his incisors extracted, all six of them, and is doing quite well after the procedure. That's a rabbit that's totally healed from incisor extraction. You can see that there's just a bunch of gum tissue there. It doesn't really look like he has anything. So then people often will ask, well, if you move their incisors, how are they actually really getting their food? How are they actually able to eat? And rabbits are extremely adaptable. Again, those incisors are really only being used to kind of grasp that food and tear pieces off. It's the back teeth that are really doing a lot of that grinding to the smaller size before they actually swallow it. So removing those, those incisors, um, they're still able to grasp their food. They're just using their lips more, and then they just kind of push it to the back and still are able to grind down their food. Rabbits that have their incisors are extracted often do very, very well. I haven't ever had any rabbits that have had any problems. One thing that is important to know, however, about incisor extraction is that we go in with the goal of removing all of those teeth. Because they have open-rooted teeth, occasionally, after you have extracted an incisor, 
occasionally you will have one or two grow back, which can be a little frustrating because then you just have to go through the whole procedure again. But it is a known um, potential complication with the surgery. So it's something that, you know, I've had it happen before and had to go in again and remove them again. So it's a can be a little annoying, but it is something that does occasionally happen. Um, so another issue, the one other thing uh, for corrective trimming. The picture down there, that's just what corrective trimming is. We're basically using a little dental drill um, to trim those teeth down to an appropriate height, appropriate length. Some people um, don't want to have their rabbit's incisors extracted, and that's fine. They, that rabbit then just has to be coming into the hospital to have those teeth trimmed down on a very frequent basis. It depends on the individual rabbit, but usually somewhere about every six to eight weeks or so, they have to come in to have those incisors trimmed down, if it's really serious. So, All right, so going on to the next problem that we can see with incisors um, is fractures. So the issue with fracturing the incisors is it usually happens without anybody even recognizing that it happened because you know rabbits are playful sometimes and they run around and be crazy and sometimes they bonk themselves on something and their teeth are designed to be ground down and so they can fracture a little piece of their incisor off now the thing is is Oftentimes it doesn't require too much care. Occasionally a rabbit will be a little bit sore from it, and sometimes owners pick up on that, that, oh, they're acting, you know, a little funny, maybe being selective of their eating, or, you know, maybe they're doing a little bit of drooling. A lot of times, though, I've had rabbits come in just for wellness exams, and I look at the incisors and, oh, did you know that he fractured his incisor? And people had no idea, which, again, most times rabbits will adapt to it just fine. And the reality is, since those teeth are constantly growing, we just have to give it a little bit of time and it'll grow back out. Um, sometimes we do need to do a little corrective trimming with it. Most times we don't have to. just depends. So it's kind of a not too difficult of a problem to deal with. The next problem that we will see with some frequency is incisor infections. So bacterial infections in the roots of the teeth are really a frequent issue that we have with rabbits. It's not too uncommon. And the signs that you may see at home that there's a problem is going to be things like drooling, there's some sort of odor from the mouth, or they're being really selective about what it is they're eating, they're choosing soft things. This rabbit down in the corner here, um, all that stuff that's on the lower, lower uh, lip there is all pus with accumulated hair from an infection at the incisor root. So when we're treating infections in the incisors, because they're often bacterial infections, we are treating them with some form of antibiotic. We are occasionally having to culture these things to see what the bacteria is, and then when we culture and identify what the bacteria is, then we're able to also determine what the most appropriate antibiotic is for that particular bacteria that's there. Occasionally, if it's a really severe infection, we do have to actually go in and remove that incisor that is infected, and we have to kind of clean out pockets, because sometimes these infections can get really, really advanced, which I'll show you a little bit more pictures of what infections look like a little bit later. And then the last issue that we have with incisors is something called incisor ribbing. And so this picture up at the top, this is a skull of a rabbit. Rather than having the nice kind of smooth surface of the incisor, it's ribbed. There's a bunch of little bumps all along the, the surface of that tooth. There are numerous causes for this, and it's something that we still don't know the exact cause in every single case. It's something that sort of the jury's still out and we still have a lot to learn about this particular issue of the tooth in rabbits. We do know that calcium deficiencies can cause this, infections can cause it, there's possibility that there's toxicities that might result in it, um, congenital problems, metabolic issues, some sort of trauma. So the treatment for this you know, ribbing of the incisors really depends on what the underlying cause is. If we have some sort of infection, treating and dealing with the infection. Um, if we have some calcium deficiency issue, then, then dealing with that. So the, the good news is, is that most of the time rabbits are able to deal with this okay, um, but 
it is something that they do occasionally need corrective trimming as well to deal with this sort of issue.